Are you tired of the mess and hassle that comes with diamond painting? Having to keep track and organizing all those tiny diamonds can be overwhelming and frustrating, leaving you feeling like you're drowning in a sea of plastic bags. Well, not to worry, because I have a 3D printed solution just for you. This baby can hold all of your tiny sparkly treasures and keep them organized so you can focus on unleashing your inner Picasso instead of dealing with a chaotic mess. What are you waiting for? Let's get ready to 3D print and upgrade your diamond painting experience. The filament I'm using here is called Rainbow Galaxy. There's a link in the description below. I designed the storage box around the trays from another creator. While I did like the design of the trays, I felt that the storage box could be improved, but I'll go into that later. You'll be printing these trays for a long time. Now that we're done printing, let me show you why you'll want to print this. Every project has its own unique requirements, which is why this organizer comes in multiple sizes. Whether you require a few trays or a larger capacity, there is an STL file specifically tailored for your needs. Streamline your diamond painting process with these special trays. These ridges help align your rhinestones in the right orientation so it's easy to pick up with your drill pen. No more fumbling around when using these trays. On the front of the trays, you'll find a space where you can write down the color codes. Some projects can have over 50 colors. This makes it super easy to find what you need. After completing a project, simply wipe down the trays for easy cleanup, allowing you to reuse them for your next project. Even though this was primarily designed to hold rhinestones, it could just as easily hold other small items as well. Why did I end up creating this thing? It started with my wife getting really frustrated dealing with those little plastic bags. And when we looked around the internet at places like Etsy and Amazon, none of those solutions really worked for us. So picture this. We have this awesome 3D printer and we needed to find a solution. Let's see if we can find an STL online that we can print. I mean, we do have a 3D printer. Let's just print something if it were only that easy. So we scoured the internet to try to find something and we did find something on Thingiverse that thought had potential. I wasn't totally convinced. It looked a little thin, a little flimsy, not so strong. Plus, there was only one size available. I decided to give it a shot and printed a sample. That sample turned out to be really weak and super skinny. I could bend it with my fingers, I could snap it. It wasn't a very solid build. Had I printed the whole thing, maybe it could have worked, but I wanted something solid and I wanted something that I can have different versions, different sizes, and that I could make them stackable. The one thing I did like about the Thingiverse project were the trays. So I decided to keep the trays, but just redesigned the storage container. Here's the kicker though. I had no clue how to use Fusion 360 to design my own box. But hold on, hold on. I did have one trick up my sleeve. I do know how to use Tinkercast. And I know some of you professional builders out there are laughing at me right now, but hey, you gotta work with what you got, right? So I knew my way around Tinkercad. I figured, hey, why not give that a shot? So on my first try, it's just a bunch of copying and pasting of all these little holes. And it came out all right. It, it, it worked, it worked. Nope. And of course, with Tinkercad, it's kind of hard to control the precise measurements of just anything you're working with because it's just a bunch of copy pasting, moving stuff around. But in the end, I was actually able to come up with something that I could print. And hey, I designed it. It might not be a rocket engine. It might not be some complicated design, but it's my design and I did it. And you got to start somewhere. So after a couple of hours with Tinkercad, this is my first prototype. However, however, it had some glaring issues. This thing is a brick. It is heavy. The walls are solid. It used up half a roll of filament. Not something that I'd want to print over and over. And quite honestly, I knew I could do better. There's no excuse for this to be using half a roll of filament. It's probably bulletproof. This bulky design worked for now, 
But if I wanted to share this with other people, I had to do some serious redesign. There was just no way around it. I had to learn how to use Fusion 360. Tinkercad was just not gonna cut it. Didn't give me the control that I needed. Good news is there's a ton, a ton of YouTube videos online that'll show you how to use Fusion 360. In a couple of days, I had my new design. This design was lighter, was just as sturdy, used much less filament. I believe 200 grams of filament versus my bulky design here that used 600 grams of filament. Using Fusion 360 not only allowed me to get the savings that I needed in filament, I also used parameters. Now, if I wanted something small, I could just change a couple of numbers. And if I wanted something really big, it's just a matter of changing numbers again. Using parameters allowed me to customize the design to whatever size I needed to fit the project that I was working on. Now the filament that I use was called Galaxy Rainbow, and it's a color shifting filament. Looks like an oil slick. That's, that's what it looks like. But I like it. And more importantly, the wife likes it. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in getting the same filament. And there you have it. From dealing with those pesky bags, to designing and creating my own storage container. I've exported just about every size container that you might want to use in your project. It doesn't matter what size printer you have, I'm sure you'll find a size for you. I've printed 2x4s, 2x2s, 4x4s, 6x6s, 6x2s, I think. There's, there's all sorts of sizes for you. And best of all, it doesn't matter what size printer you have. You might have a bigger bed, like I do with the CR10 or you might have a smaller print bed. I'm sure that you'll find an STL that is just the right size for your bed. That's what she said. <laughs> Hopefully with this design, your next diamond printing project won't be as frustrating. Until next time, happy printing.